All right, this is um, this is part five of the review for our second exam for paralegal essentials. Paralegal essentials. Um, this was the first exam to see if you're ready for the mock exams. What kind of evidence requires an inference? Since direct, and that would be direct evidence, circumstantial evidence. Since direct evidence is from personal observation, it does not require an inference. Which kind of evidence, which kind of evidence is admissible? Direct evidence and circumstantial evidence. If relevant, and there are no other evidentiary issues to keep the evidence out, such as privilege, both direct and circumstantial evidence may be admissible. Which carries more weight in court? Direct evidence and circumstantial. Juries are regularly instructed that direct and circumstantial evidence carry the same weight. This is likely the most single misunderstood aspect of evidence. Can a person convicted of a crime based on circumstantial evidence can a person be convicted of a crime based on circumstantial evidence alone? Yes. In fact, most crimes are not committed in plain view of others. Most criminal cases are primarily based on circumstantial evidence. Can one piece of evidence, such as a weapon, be both direct and circumstantial? Yes. For instance, as the murder, the murder of a, of a victim, the gun registration of the murder weapon is direct evidence that he owned the weapon, but is only circumstantial evidence that he committed the murder. When reaching court rules in the law library, where should, where should a paralegal begin? In the index. In hardbound books, especially secondary authorities, rules, and statutes, the index is by far and away the most efficient place to begin research. When interviewing a witness, the paralegal does not does a disservice to the client if he does not prepare in advance for the interview. It is the same as if the an attorney had walked into the courtroom and interviewed a witness without preparing. So the answer was, when interviewing a witness, it is best to prepare questions prior to the interview. Duh. When interviewing a witness, it is best to pursue the client's interests. When performing a task as a part of an attorney's representation, it is required that a paralegal act in the best interest act in the best interests of the client. When interviewing a client, it is best to a prepare questions in advance. Again, preparing for an interview indicates the professionalism of the paralegal. When interviewing a client, it is best to remain neutral. When preparing an interview question, it is best to organize the questions. Chronologically, since the sequence of events is critical to the law, organize your questions chronologically to pre-event, pre event, and post-event stages. <sighs> Admissible evidence is evidence the jury will be allowed to hear. Not all relevant evidence is admissible. For instance, a spouse's testimony may be very relevant, but might not be admissible due to spousal communications privilege. A privilege means that a privilege may not... A privilege means that a privilege may involve either of the above. So, let's see, a privilege means that a witness can test, refuse to testify. A witness can prevent someone else from testifying. For instance, a defendant may generally refuse to testify as to a conversation he had with his wife and may also prevent his wife from testifying to that conversation. Who owns a privilege? The person in legal jeopardy. The person in legal jeopardy owns the privilege. Therefore, if the defendant waives his spousal privilege, the spouse will most likely have to testify whether she wants to or not. Which of the following is not a privilege? Clergy, penitent, husband, wife. Answer C. Both of the above are privileges. The clergy penitent privilege is often referred to as priestly privilege. Oh, we know this. Forget it. Which of the following is not a privilege? And the answer is paralegal client. Which of the following is not a privilege? Well, both of the above are privileges. Government information and doctor patient. So they both are. A privilege generally involves private communication. For a privilege to be valid, the communication must have been private and must remain private. Who may waive a privilege? Only the person in legal jeopardy. 
Only the person in legal jeopardy can waive a privilege. The person owning the privilege can disclose the information him or himself, thereby waiving the privilege. The person owning the privilege may also allow someone else to testify, thereby wa waiving their the privilege. They are both considered voluntary waivers. If the information is disclosed by accident by the per not by the person owning the privilege, it is an involuntary waiver, meaning that the privilege is waived despite the objection of the owner. If the information is disclosed through no fault of the privileged individual, the privilege is generally not considered to be waived. Proof or disproof of a fact in the issue is evidence. Not all evidence is admissible, even if it proves or disproves a fact. Investigation always involves finding facts. Investigation is always about finding facts. Legal research is about finding law. When investigating, a paralegal should pursue any and all evidence that appears to be relevant. Skip tracing means locating missing clients or witnesses. A skip is intentional or unintentional. The client may not be aware that they are missing. Which kind of skip is most likely to remain in the local vicinity? A financial skip. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's a criminal skip. Which kind of skip is most likely to remain in the local vicinity. A criminal skip. Okay. And then the next one is um, test prep A. Here we go. In a citation, the site published by a private company is the unofficial site. What kind, what could be found in the parentheses at the end of a citation? It's a court, court abbreviation or the year. Oh, it's all the above or the state. So it's the, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong answer. I'm sorry, so it's A and B. The court abbreviation and the year was the answer. Um, some citations only prov provide an unofficial site with no official, with no unofficial, such as Smith versus Jones, 642P.2D483. In such a case, the reader is not able to determine what court decided the case by the publication. Therefore, the writer must provide not only the year in parentheses, but also the abbreviation for the court that decided the option. This means that the jury will be allowed to hear the evidence. Admissibility. When conducting investigation, a paralegal is primarily concerned with finding facts. Communication between a paralegal and the client is protected by what privilege? Attorney-client. Hearsay is admissible only under exception and admissible unless it falls under an exception. If a statement is determined not to be hearsay, it is admissible, assuming no other rules would prevent its introduction. And the answer to that is yes. Relevant statements are admissible if they are not hearsay, unless another rule applies, such as privilege. Carol has been called in to testify. She saw and overheard Henry kicking over a trash can yelling, Doctors are all quacks! Henry is now being sued for slander by the MA. The plaintiff wants Carol to testify. Will her testimony as to the contract of Henry be considered hearsay? No. Only statements can be hearsay. Conduct is not hearsay. If it's a paralegal respond, is a paralegal required to get permission of a witness to record the interview? Oh yes, they are. And formal witnesses, witness statements are generally under oath. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry. Informal witness statements are generally handwritten, the result of something unexpected in the interview. All right, that was part A, and now we have part part B. Oh. In a citation, this would come first. The official cite. In a citation, which of the following would be considered primary authority? The official cite. 
and the unofficial site. Both the official and unofficial sites contain primary authority. In citations and reporters, a region is a collection of states. Regions are collections of states, therefore regional reporters can contain state appellate and supreme court's cases. In citations and reporters, a circuit is a collection of federal districts. Federal circuits are a combination of federal districts, thus appeals from federal district courts go to the appropriate federal district court, federal circuit court. Evidence can be that can be touched is physical, demonstrative, and tangible. What of the follow, which of the following kinds of evidence would always be admissible in course, court? Direct, no, 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 direct, circumstantial, and relevant. This kind of evidence does not require an inference. Circumstantial evidence. No, 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 no. This kind of evidence does not require an inference. Direct evidence. Direct evidence is from personal observation, and thus no inference is required. Hearsay always involves in-court testimony and out-of-court statement. Hearsay is an in-court testimony of an out-of-court statement made by someone other than the in-court witness, offered to establish the truth of the matter asserted. When establishing hearsay, the question of credibility lies with the out-of-court witness. Witness statements taken by paralegal may be recorded. Only if the person being interviewed is aware and agrees to be recorded. When interviewing a witness, a paralegal should pursue the client's interests, never secretly record the interview. When interviewing a client, a paralegal should generally remain neutral. Which of the following may be cited? Cases, statutes, regulations, the Constitution. There we go. That's that section.